Franklin Delano Roosevelt swept into office on a wave of popularity based on one primary factor, hope. Somehow, perhaps because it was what was needed most, FDR found a way to inspire hope in the masses. He had promised them change, a new deal, and for better or worse, he delivered. months, my friends, since I have talked to the people of this country about our national problems. But during this period, many things have happened. And I am glad to say that the major part of them have greatly helped the well-being of the average citizen. His first accomplishment was convincing the people that with him at the helm, their lives would get better and better. However, words would only get him so far. To make good on his promises and to save the nation, he had quite a to-do list. First, he had to get people back to work. Unemployment had defeated the American people, both economically and spiritually. Second, he had to promote recovery. He had to enact policies that would shore up the failing economy. And finally, he had to reform the government. He had to find ways to regulate business and industry so that the practices that caused the crisis would not continue. In the first 100 days of Roosevelt's administration, he made 10 major speeches, sent 15 messages to Congress, and helped push through the passage of 15 major pieces of legislation. Never before or since has there been such an extraordinary period of legislative activity. <laughs> A prompt program applied as quickly as possible. First, we are giving opportunity of employment to a quarter of a million of the unemployed. Next, the Congress is about to pass legislation that will greatly ease the mortgage distress among the farmers and among the homeowners of the nation. Our next step in seeking immediate relief is a grant of half a billion dollars. But what did all this activity actually accomplish? Well, in terms of recovery, FDR immediately began pumping money into the economy. The Works Progress Administration put people to work doing jobs of public usefulness. Using government funding, the WPA employed people building schools, parks, playgrounds, and hospitals. It also supported culture, employing artists and actors. There were WPA-sponsored and funded concerts, plays, books, and more. All of these things not only put money in the workers' pockets, but at the same time, they improved Americans' quality of life. Another plus of having these creative people on the government payroll was using them to create posters and short movies that communicated the changes and successes to the public. You and you and you and you, you've got a president now. He gave the land a new deal. You hold the cards, now you deal. You and you and you and you put shoulders to the plow. He gave us what we asked for, now pay him back somehow. Step out in front. Get back of the president. Meanwhile, lawmakers worked on making sure that the perfect storm of events that had caused the Depression was never allowed to happen again. These were the most long-lasting accomplishments of the New Deal, many still in effect today. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation began monitoring bank soundness and insuring deposits so that people would stop hoarding their cash and put it back in the banks and back in circulation. 
The Social Security Act essentially established an account to help the unemployed, the dependent, the handicapped, and to support people in their retirement. But perhaps the most immediate and hope-inspiring of FDR's programs were the relief programs. FDR used government funds to give direct relief through the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. Ultimately, the FERA distributed about $3 billion to 8 million families, one-sixth of the population. Of course, this was to be a temporary handout to get folks in real trouble on their feet. The Farm Credit Association sought to help the farmers by providing low-interest loans. The Public Works Administration gave loans to private industry to build roads, bridges, dams, and airports. Much of the work of these programs forms the infrastructure of America today. And in creating this Civilian Conservation Corps, we are killing two birds with one stone. We are clearly enhancing the value of our natural resources, and at the same time, we are relieving an appreciable amount of actual distress. The most popular of all FDR's relief programs was the Civilian Conservation Corps. FDR was well aware of the need for conservation. In addition to the unbridled economic speculation, the country had embarked on unprecedented development. With an eye to progress, we had ignored the consequences to our natural resources, causing widespread erosion and deforestation. The purpose of the CCC was to put young men to work doing conservation projects across the nation. As the CCC's organizers scanned the country, their interest was caught by a place not far from the hub of all the activity, Washington, D.C. Just west of the Capitol in the Blue Ridge Mountains, a new national park was proposed, and a scenic highway was taking shape along its crest. It promised to be a crown jewel in the national park system, and it was in great need of reforestation, erosion and fire control, and infrastructure for basic visitor comfort like lodges and power and picnic shelters. The to-do list was endless, and thousands of unemployed young men were just the ticket to make it all happen. <laughs> 